You know, the hockey community loves to go out there and go over and over and over and over and over about how the Colorado Avalanche and their blue line is one of the best in the entire business. And you know, that's a very fair claim to go out there and make with guys like Kale McCarr out there, with guys like Samuel Girard out there. You got yourselves what is a blue line that rivals so many other blue lines we have seen in, let's say, the past decade in the NHL. But when it comes to the guys suiting up on this decor, one of them is a newer addition to the team, and he's honestly one that I think is coming out of what is the worst trade the Islanders have pulled off in a very long time, and we're going to be talking about that here in this video today. So a big shout out over onto a Twitter user. His name is Kevin Papetti. He posted a tweet back in January that kind of put this on my radar, and it's the entire reason why I'm making this video. Take a look at this. Devon Taves, for two second round picks, has to be one of the worst trades of the past decade. What a steal. Now, the tweet has 14,000 likes, so there's a lot of people that went out there and were sharing this around, and it's kind of how I saw it as well. Let's go over Devon Taves. He is a Colorado Avalanche defender, as you kind of know right now, and his entire profile, why he got traded, and what exactly the Islanders got for this guy, who is now performing the way he is. So, starting things off, Devon Taves is a Colorado Avalanche blue liner. He's 27 years old, 6'1", 192, a left-handed guy making $4.1 million a season till the end of 2024. Now, this contract was signed by the Colorado Avalanche when they acquired this player in a trade from the Islanders because it was initially drafted by New York in 2014. They traded for the signing rights for Devon Taves, not Taves himself. This is because back in 2020, you had yourselves Devon Taves coming off of a year where playing for the New York Islanders, he had himself 28 points in 68 games played. He had just played his second NHL season, and he was kind of in a position where a lot of people were like, okay, yeah, he's good. He had spent such a long time developing. He had played in the Surrey Eagles system back in the early 2010s, so the BCHL. He was playing with the Abbotsford Pilots in the PJHL, so Junior B hockey. This guy was on a path of development. And as a guy who commentated for PJHL hockey myself, it is so awesome to see guys go from Junior B to the Junior A scene, to the NCAA scene, to the AHL, to the NHL, and then do as well as they're doing right now. Because Devon Taves did that. When this guy was a teenager, he was playing for the Fraser Valley Bruins, U18 club in the BCEHL. He also played, as we said, for the Abbey Pilots. The Pilots, man, they always get good players. It's kind of wild. And Devon Taves certainly had himself a schedule playing for that team. But starting in 2011, 2012, and 2012, 2013, he became a mainstay for the Surrey Eagles in the BCHL, where in his second season in that league, he had himself a 47 point in 48 game campaign, which was good enough to net him some pretty good rights at Quinnipiac University. He was good enough in his first season with Quinnipiac to be drafted in the NHL draft. Now, to be fair, he was a fourth round guy, and also, to be fair, he was a double overager. So, there wasn't really the most projectable, like, profile within this player. You don't really draft 20-year-olds in the fourth round and expect them to become NHL stars. But either way, he was drafted, and he had spent some more time in Quinnipiac before making his way over to the AHL. His 2016-17 season, so his first pro year, saw him get 45 points in 76 games played as a defenseman. So that's pretty good. This is around the time where the scouting reports start to come in here, and we start to see what this guy is made of. Here's a scouting report from Dauber Prospects in 2017. Devon Taves is in his first season of pro hockey in the AHL, a proven point producer in the NCAA. He and the Islanders obviously felt the jump to pro was right for his development. Devon has shown the ability to adjust to the pro game seamlessly as he continues to produce points and be a key contributor on the power play. He is blessed with great hockey sense and tremendous passing skills and vision, which make him a commodity in the game in the way it's played today. There's a legitimate shot for Taves to play for the Islanders in the future because of his ability to move the puck and be a key possession player. Wow, great praise for a double over age fourth round pick who eventually made his way over to the AHL. 
He played another season with the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, getting 22 points in 30 games played. Eventually played for the Islanders, where he suited up and he had 18 points in 48 games. Not bad for a guy who was drafted in the fourth round and eventually made his debut like three years later. And his last season with the Islanders saw him get 28 points in 68 games played over there. He was on the Islanders team that made a big run, and you could see the scouting reports over here kind of waxing poetic even more about how good Devon Taves was for this team. There's so many scouting reports on the Dauber website about how he played in the bubble, and how him and Scott Mayfield and Boychuk and all these other guys were doing their thing. It pretty much just summarizes the game, so I'm not going to go ahead and read any of these over here. But long story short, Devon Taves in 2020 was seen as a very good player who got 10 points in 22 games and who needed a contract. He was an RFA, even though he was this guy taken at 20 years old in the draft and he played more seasons in the NCAA and the AHL. He needed a contract. And so, there was somewhat of a problem here that Lou Lamorello had to face, and when it came to the way this team and their salary was constructed, you kind of had to bite the dust on at least one of these players, and Devon Taves was that guy. Taves received a qualifying offer, but he eventually filed for salary arbitration, so the Islanders, in their attempt to go out there and make their salary cap work, traded Devon Taves to the Colorado Avalanche for two second-round picks. The first one became Giannis Moser, which was used in the 2021 draft, and then the 2022 draft. That pick has not been used yet either. Giannis Moser is a defender taken by the Arizona Coyotes. It's not even used by the Islanders, and the reason for that is because this pick, along with a whole bunch of other picks, was sent over to Arizona in the Andrew Ladd trade, where the Islanders received future considerations in order to get Andrew Ladd off the books. So, Pretty much from the Devon Taves trade, there's only one second round pick that they have within their system and that hasn't been used yet. Now you take a look at how good Devon Taves has been. He got signed to a $4.1 million contract by the Avalanche. It's taken him till 2024. He's 27 years old right now. This season, skipping his first year with the Avalanche, he's got 32 points in 33 games. He's a point-per-game defender on a team that has a few point-per-game defenders. Okay, they only have one other point-per-game defender in Kale McCarr, but it sounded cooler in my head when I said it like that. And still, Samuel Girard, you have a whole bunch of really good players that are doing their thing. Obviously, Bowen Byram was good when he was in the lineup. Unfortunately, he was taken out, though. So, you have yourselves Devon Taves, one of the mainstay blue liners on this team. He has exploded offensively, and... He was acquired for two second-round picks, one of them the Islanders don't even have anymore. That second-round pick that was used to draft Giannis Moser was pretty much used as a ticket to allow them to free up money for Andrew Ladd. Like, Lamorello needed to make this move and trade away Devon Taves in order to free up salary, and he just used the return to free up even more salary. That sucks, dude. And it's super unfortunate to see for the Islanders and their fan base how things went down because you're not going to see the return for Devon Taves actually do anything on your team until you use that 2022 second round pick and you wait for that guy to develop and everything. So the Islanders, yeah, it's unfortunate, isn't it? I know the Islanders have not been great this season, so I kind of am dancing on their grave in a way with this video over here, but... Come on, you gotta call out bad trades when you see them, and this one was made two years ago, or it was made a year ago, pretty much, because it's the beginning of 2022, right? And now, just looking at the benefits and the trade return, it very much is not one that I think a lot of Islanders fans want to think about, because this guy, I mean, he's a great player. He was a great player back then. It was just a difficult decision that Lamorello had to make in order to free up the necessary money to allow your team to exist in the proper way. And now Devon Taves has really blossomed into what he was able to be back when he was drafted as a double overager in the 20. 14 NHL draft. So talk to me in the comments if you're an Islanders fan. What do you think about Devon Taves and the draft pick that you got for this guy? I say draft pick and not draft picks because you sent one of them away in the Andrew Ladd trade. And Colorado Avalanche fans, Joe Sackick does it again, eh? I know a lot of Avalanche fans kind of don't like me because of the video I made a few months ago when that trade for Darcy Kemper was made and I said that Sackick got fleeced, but that was a trade out of necessity. But I'll give Sackick his props when he deserves them, and this is definitely one of those moments. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the Devon Taves situation. I hope you enjoyed this Vishraj Rolls 99.
and bye. <laughs>